Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Threw a little Pearl of dance in for you. Why not? You guys are doing it all day anyways, right? Might as well do it now. Uh, we are going to be doing Central Division today. We did. Well, there are other divisions we did. Not all of them yet, but we got most of them. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at my paper. Which divisions did we do? Uh, we did Pacific Division. We did Atlantic Division. And now we're doing Central Division. And uh, I'm going to give you, so you don't have to go through the whole video and see all the pearls that I give for every team. But if you want to see my selections, you have to watch the whole video. But if you want to see, if you want to hear the selections that came from my li our live stream, I don't even like to say my, at the NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show, as you can see there in the fancy little thing they got, the NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show, that you can be part of just by hitting the sub button, and you can come on at 1 Mountain, 3 Eastern, until when I feel like it. And uh, we do all of this prediction stuff and talking about rumors and trades and what's going on in the NHL and all that kind of stuff like that. You can be part of that if you want. Why not? Also, I'm going to be doing live streams too with Peyton on the radio. Peyton on the radio. He's the best there. I said it. Okay. Let's look at, and that's all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like all sports, not just hockey, but all, all four major sports and teams within those all four major sports, you'll love Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Go check it out. Steelflyers.com. Okay. The community had Arizona 8th, Nashville 7th, Blues 6th, Blackhawks 5th, Wild 4th, Dallas Stars 3rd, Winnipeg Jets 2nd, and Colorado number 1. Mine were different, and uh, we're going to talk about that as we talk about the reason why we put all of these in these spots right now. Arizona, eighth. Okay, let's talk about Arizona, shall we? Why we put them eighth. Probably won't be that long of a conversation, to tell the honest truth. I don't know. If Tell me in the comment section if you got them higher than eighth, but... Uh, Phil Kessel being injured and wanting to, to be traded at the same time, <laughs> excuse me, uh, makes it even more difficult for a team that has traded pretty much their whole roster away. The only value they have right now is whether Barrett Hayton can become what he was drafted to be quite a while ago when they over kind of overstep and picked him. I think that was when Matthews got drafted. The Matthews draft, or was it was a bad pick anyways, and it hasn't panned out for them as of yet. Could happen yet, but it hasn't happened as of yet. Uh, Nick Schmaltz is your number one. We did a ranking of the number one centers in the league video, and Nick Schmaltz came last. <laughs> yeah. And Clayton Keller, I mean, poor Clayton, Clayton Keller. I don't know. He's just been on bad team after bad team, and it's just getting worse and worse. But this lineup overall is just poopy. You got Louis Erickson is on your lineup at all for any reason. You need help. And here he is still sitting in the lineup uh, for Arizona. And Jay Beagle barely holding on injury-wise, same as end. Anton Roussel, there's no goals. Where's the goals going to come from? You got poor Jacob Chikrin here who would probably be close to a Norris candidate on any other team that has to wallow on this team. Now, there was trade rumors about Jacob Chikrin, but the, the Arizona Coyotes have put him to rest. Apparently, he's willing to, to build with them and bring this uh, team into the promised land eventually. There's a lot of good news about Arizona as far as the future of this team. They've got a, a general manager that's picked up three firsts next year and five second-round picks and probably will get more. That's the way you do a rebuild, all right. And uh, so it, it could happen quick that way. The good news is that you have a manager that it looks like he knows what he's doing now. 
Uh, but with Carter Hutton and Joseph Cornosh, really, this team, Carter Hutton was terrible last year. Absolutely terrible. Look at those numbers. I know he's in Buffalo, but still, is he any better in Arizona? But those are the perfect goaltenders to have when you want to come like a last place, pretty much. Get yourself Tyler Wright. Uh, and next year, I believe it's Tyler Wright. He's could be a, looks like a superstar center if they can win that lotto. The year after that, you got a guy like Bedard possible, and uh, then things are starting to look up. But yeah, this team being an eighth only makes sense. I think Victor Schuderstrom down here should make the team this year, but it, I guess I can understand why even if he was good enough, it's probably best just to let him keep on growing in whatever level that they're going to put him at. Uh, hopefully for his sake, he goes into the AHL and gets some North American North American uh, experience in North America is what I'm trying to say. Okay, next, Nashville Predators. We have the Nashville Predators 7th. I had Arizona 8th, by the way. Nashville in 7th, and I had um, Nashville in 7th as well. The only thing that has me thinking otherwise here is that um, Heinz really had this team flying last year. If they play with that same heart, you just never know. But this division is so difficult. Uh, there isn't really any teams out there that, you're, that are going to be easy to outwork and outheart. So it probably is going to come down to roster and this Nashville just doesn't have the roster. Uh, moving Ellis, they moved Ellis for, for Philip Myers, and that sort of rings in my ears as this is a team that's heading towards a rebuild. Getting a young guy like that, giving up Ellis, who has been a staple of a defenseman and, and a damn good one at that in Nashville for as long as he has. I realize he hasn't been the same after the injury, but he's still been very good. And if they were going still considering themselves contenders for playoffs and the cup. They probably are not making this trade. I'm going to be interested to see what Philip Myers projects progresses into in Nashville, who has been really good at developing defensemen in the history. So it should be a pretty interesting. Cody Glass will be interesting, but overall this roster just doesn't have the offense. Ryan Johansson has proven over and over again he's not a number one center. Uh, Matt Duchesne has got to come in with a different attitude and really give her finally at 30 years old. Grow up, dude. Got all the talent in the world, man. Just got to. It's I've heard from many players that have played before in interviews, which you don't hear this too often. Guys saying stuff and they're usually pretty kind about it. But apparently he's like very whiny and complainy and actually brings the team down. Do you notice when. Duchesne got hurt last year that uh, all of a sudden from that moment on Nashville was good uh, just a coincidence maybe I don't know but I've heard that from several players uh, oh right um, is it O'Reilly from uh, Sirius Radio played with him in, Co in Colorado and said yeah he's a pretty whiny dude so um, look for Philip Forsberg to get traded and uh, to this to be a, a start to get to be like a burn down rebound, re rebuild. Unless uh, Hines does this motivation thing that he did with them last year and they just outwork everybody and make it, but very tough to do. The other problem is, is they don't have a lot of guys coming up in their system that is going to make a significant difference besides Philip Tomasino who is doesn't look like he's going to make the lineup even this year. And he doesn't tip the scales absolutely huge. He's not a superstar, but he'll probably play. Um, odd for them, they don't really even have any defensemen that are ready to go right now. Um, so they need to restock, and I, I have a feeling that they're going to do so. Next, we have St. Louis Blues. Yeah, I know. It's hard to put the St. Louis Blues in sixth here. But the, first of all, this is a very tough division. In other divisions, I think that they would probably do better. Second of all, it's probably not a terrible thing that they get a really good draft pick this year. 
Um, they got to start redoing this defense. And that's the defense is pretty much the problem. I like the Brandon Saad move. At, he's only 28 years old. They probably don't have to have like a burn it down rebuild here, but there is some retooling that certainly I think needs to be done. Um, they do have a couple players getting long in the tooth, but Ryan O'Reilly should still have a lot of legs left. I don't know what happens with Vladimir Tarasenko. If he comes out and starts flying, then hopefully they can get a decent package for him. And, uh, you know, David Perron has got to get re-signed. I, I would re-sign him. He, he seems to always want to come back. Um, he's a good, solid veteran that loves St. Louis. I think it's a guy to have there to uh, to give that sense that St. Louis is a great place to be. I think Perron is good for that. Um, Braden Shen and Buknevich. The veterans are not terribly old. They've got they could go through like a three year build here, real quick one, and uh, be pretty solid, pretty quick. You still got Jordan Cairo. Robert Thomas has got to rebound. That's the biggest thing for St. Louis. Robert Thomas needs to rebound right now. Robert, I got an invitation for you. Come down to uh, Perlo's house of spanking. Uh, the uh, you can get. I'll give it to. I'll send uh, Hernandez here for your uh, uh, with the Perlo copter. Come pick you up. Come come get yourself a good old spanking before the season starts, and I bet you you'll be a lot better off. You're welcome. And I know you're listening. I know you're watching. I know for free. No free, free dude, free on me. Ah, uh, he's got to turn things around. Clifford. Bozak and Mackenzie McEachern is okay. It's a, it's a good fourth line. It's down here. The Tory Krug move. Eh, I like him, but he's I like Tory Krug, but he's not a guy that like runs your whole defense. They don't have anybody here that really runs their whole defense. Unless Colton Pareko can come back from his many injuries and take back the reins of what he was before. And that's a big if. He's had some pretty significant injuries. Besides that, Scandal, uh, Marco Scandell is pretty average. To me, Justin Falk is pretty much an average defenseman. And most teams, he wouldn't be playing up here on your top right-handed def- as a top your uh, number two righty. Just it. This is uh, shallow, a very shallow defense. I don't know, Miko, uh, Nico Mikola has been working himself up. He's a big boy. We'll see what he can do. I don't want to say too much yet because St. Louis has really brought up prospects well, so he could be ready and ready to go. But I do know that Robert Bertuzzo is pretty meh. Like, it's not that great of a defense. This is the problem. Jordan Bennington gets some consistency when he's on. He's freaking on. They got. They need him to be on constantly and not focusing his mind on anything other than stopping that freaking puck. When you see Bennington get frustrated with outside stuff that's going on and all that kind of stuff like that, that's all that pride stuff and that that he seems to be like an arrogant kid. And people have said, I've heard people say, you know, it's good to be confident. It is good to be confident, but arrogant is not a good sign. Arrogant means usually means insecurity and a goaltender that can be thrown off his game. Unless you're like Patrick Waugh, who could be thrown off his game, but he was just so stupid good it didn't seem to matter about his insecurities or anything. Bennington's not quite not there as far as sc- talent is concerned. Damn good, but if he got his head straight, man, woo, fantastic. And Billy Huso is not shown to be a good backup yet, and that's the reason why we got him at number six. We just think they're going to have a difficult time stopping pucks, and they're in a very tough division. So, Next, Chicago Blackhawks. Now, I had the Minnesota Wild here in this spot. Uh, I'll talk about that, why I'm a little lower than the other, uh, the, the rest of the community was. Uh, but the offense for Chicago is not – ever going to be a problem. Jabrinka, I, I can't wait to see Kirby Doc play his full freaking year at the number one spot, which they have on that, which is damn good. I just love, love, love this guy. Kirby Doc is like going to be probably 
my top one of my top five favorite players in the NHL for sure. Love him. Big, huge guy. Love the way he plays. Loves it. Love his heart. Love everything about him. I know you're watching, Kirby. And I, I hope that gives you a little lift in your step as you put your skates on today. I'm sure you can. <laughs> Patrick Kane can't play defense anymore, but 66 points in 56 games. You don't have to play all that much defense, do you? Uh, offense all day. Can Debrinkat score over? Can you get a 50? I think Debrinkat can get a 50. Kubalik with Taves and Brandon Hagel. I love that line. Um, I would rather see Nylander there just simply because he's not because he should be there. I would rather him be uh, have developed enough that he's playing there because that's where he needs to play. But he's been a slow develop that Nylander. But as it stands. That's a really good, solid, give you everything type line. Haggles the grind it out in the corner, get it out to the to Taze. Taze pass it to Kubalik over and over again. And Kubalik pots 30 goals. Uh, I, I'm a huge, huge, huge Jonathan, Jonathan Taze fan. Um, I don't care. It's 10.5 million people say he's overpaid. I never thought he was overpaid. The guy's one of the greatest leaders ever. I just, I love him. So, Kurashev uh, is back in here. I notice now because they had him in the minors. He keeps on working his way onto the lineup, back onto the lineup. I Good, hard working dude. Got a, he's got a good shot, can do lots of things for your lineup. I like it. Um, but with Tyler Johnson in the middle and, and Brett Connolly, it's pretty soft for a third line. That's kind of what I don't like it. It's almost like this is your third line. And this is your second line that plays against maybe softer competition other lines. Uh, but they'll put up some decent offense, and there's a lot of speed on that line. So interesting to watch. And then poor Dylan Strom back here on the fourth line. Uh, uh, he, I don't know if he's not working on his skating enough, but I have not seen his skating anywhere near improve. If he could be like 20% better at skating, he would be a top-line left winger. Or center, but he's just not good enough. It's unfortunate. His skating holds him back a lot. And again, there's no real fourth line here. Nylander, Carpenter, and Strom. My biggest issue here is I think Chicago could get beat up quite a bit on their lower lines, but those outscore the opposition quite a bit. Like every line can score. If they can get into the offensive zone and, and allow them to be creative, all the, every line can score against what lines that they'll be going up against. But if they get caught in the defensive zone, they're in big trouble. Uh, as far as defense, love McCabe. Can he stay healthy? That's the biggest thing. If McCabe can stay healthy, I like this. I, I love this uh, this McCabe Jones combination. Jones can now be the offensive player that he always wanted to be, uh, and uh, the offensive player that he always wanted to be. Unfortunately, Tortorella, I love Tortorella. I think he made a big mistake trying to turn him into a shutdown guy. He's just not that. Seth Jones is not going to give you the best defense in the world. I hope you know that out there. He's just not. Uh, DeHaan and Murphy, solid second line. I, I don't know why Connor Murphy gets crapped on all the time. I think he's fine. If you look, if analytically speaking, he's great. Um, I don't fully go everything on analytics, but Connor, Connor Murphy... Um, he, I, I was kind of woken up to his game through analytics. And as I watched it, I, I started to see the little things that he does a lot. Um, I like him, I like him a lot. Uh, this is where it kind of cr falls down for me, but I still have, uh, Chicago higher because, uh, Riley Stillman and Ian Mitchell, uh, not sure what they are yet. They need to step up quite a bit. And as far as defense coming up, I would rather have Wyatt Kalniak there. I think he's going to take the spot, plus Nicholas Bodine. The one thing that I do like is there are some talent issues in the 5-6 spot, but there is a lot of depth to be able to, you know, a lot of options to be able to put in there at the right time. So it kind of makes up for it. And then Mark andre Fleury, of course. That's the reason why I have him them higher. Um, he just never gets enough credit. On my live stream, 
I still have people saying, I think you're overvaluing Marc Andre Fleury. How do you overvalue? Because he's 36. Did you, have you, did you happen to notice what he did last year? What he's done in Pittsburgh? I, I've been overvaluing Marc Andre Fleury his whole career, and I'll continue to do so. And I don't think it's overvaluing. I think it's exactly where he needs to be. I don't know why this guy gets crapped on as much as he does. Love, love, love him. I don't really understand what Chicago is doing here. I, I think it's like, let's go for it while Taves can still play type thing. Uh, but I think there's a very good chance they make the playoffs. So, And Marc-Andre Fleury can always take you there. Always take you there. Um, decent depth like it's, uh, defensively. Uh, offensively, maybe not so much. Um, I got to see a little more of the guys like uh, Harden and Entwistle, where they are right now in their development, because there wasn't much to see last year. Borgstrom was, they were trying him in, not, in that, this spot here, but it looks like Tyler Johnson has taken the spot so far. Um, he doesn't give you much offense, but he can fill in spots. I think they got enough. I think they have enough to be able to step in for injuries that this team will be okay. And I just like Mark andre Fleury. I, I think he covers any holes that they may have. Next, Minnesota Wild. And I had Minnesota fifth. And I had a really tough time chewing up. The main reason why I probably will be wrong about this is Dean Evason is an unbelievable coach. Unbelievable. I think he's up there with Barry Trotz. Now, I know he's going to have to show it. I'm predicting that his name will be up there with Barry Trotz, Tortorella, Sullivan, all of those guys like that that are in the NHL right now that are the elite coaches in the NHL. He's going to, he's, he's going to be an elite coach in the NHL. He's going to do things that the rest of the community and the NHL uh, not, and, and fans – will know his name as an elite. Quinville is another one up there with those guys. But just losing Suter, I still think Suter was was good. I don't think it's a bad thing that they did with buying out Suter. I get it. He's taking up a spot, and you have to give him that spot that they're going to need to start giving younger players. Uh, Minnesota has really got to work towards getting some depth in this lineup. Uh, as far as youth is concerned. So they can be a contender in the near future. They also did have to sign Kaprizov. And I know they didn't save that much, but they did save some. And it had to happen. You cannot lose Kaprizov. Um, not to mention, they're, they're, uh, they may have to go out and get a center. They may not. It's all going to depend on what Matthew Boldy turns into and uh, Rossi. Marco Rossi, what uh, he can do in the NHL. Uh, but as it stands right now, it's just a little thin up the middle. Joel, I like Joel Arison Eck. Um, I think he can fill in in a number one role, much the same, like because of his strong two way play. Um, but ultimately, he's not really what you want to call a number one guy. Now, Ryan Hartman is a gamer. He did really well in this number two spot. Uh, brought his career further than he's ever in his career. Uh, and I think that goes a lot to Dean Evison. But again, it's not the guy you want in that spot. Um, so it's the thinness up the middle to me. Might Has me, with this very difficult division, has me thinking that they might miss this year. Um, so... That's, that's pretty much it. I, their wingers are okay. Victor Rask has got to go somewhere. Uh, he came back after a terrible injury, and he's doing the best he can, but probably want somebody stronger than that somewhere in the lineup for sure. Um, yeah, it's fairly deep. Defense is taking a hit again because of Suter and Susie. Susie, to me, was a big, ah, a big loss. I really liked Susie a lot. I, I thought that they might, they they have absolute huge love affair with Matt Dumba. I don't get it. I don't think he's bad, but 
I think I probably would have kept Susie and traded Dumba unless there was no value for him out there. If there was no value for him out there, I get it. It's hard to say. Matt Dumba is a very, uh, you know, opinionated guy. He has his political leanings and stuff, and maybe a lot of teams takes the value from his trade value away, possibly. But I think you could probably get some pretty good value for him. Um, the other thing is Dmitry Kulikov and Jordy Ben is not spectacular there, and there's not much to take his spot. I know Minnesota fans are very high on Kalen Addison, but I don't think he's he's okay. He's an okay defenseman. He's not fantastic. Um, and there's not much out there to replace him. John Lazat, I know they're going to give him a good shot, but he's 26 years old and he hasn't made it yet. So uh, Dakota Mermish, Choosman, Joe, Hick, Joe Higgins have pretty much established themselves as minor leaguers. They, they need help. They got saw a little bit of help coming possibly with Ryan O'Rourke, who they drafted in 2020. I really like him, but he won't be ready yet. See, there's what that's kind of what I'm saying. There's not much step-in ready guys here. And I think if there's injuries, there could be a problem. Cam Talbot, I think, will be fine. A lot of people are thinking otherwise. I think he's reached that point in his career where it's, he has stability in his own mind, and he'll play very well. Capo Kakinen, uh, I thought he was going to be better last year. I'm a little concerned about that. But overall, I think their goaltending is okay. Um, and then, like I said, it's the Dean Evison factor. It's a great coach, amazing coach. Next, Dallas Stars. And I had the Blackhawks in the wild spot and the wild in the Blackhawks spot. Um, Dallas Stars. I did not have Dallas Stars at three. I had them at two. But the more I look at this lineup, I start to wonder. Yeah, I know I do. I don't wonder. I, I, I'm i liking it actually more than I did when I put him in two. Because Joel Kibaranta. If Joel Kibaranta came in in spectacular shape, I think this guy can be a solid number two left winger. And that would be an absolute huge boost for Dallas. They got some older guys. Pavelski, and people are asking, 37, is Pavelski going to be okay? Probably. He shouldn't be okay already, and he's more than okay. 51 points in 56 games. Fantastic. Good to see Ropo Hints up there on the first line. Uh, he's still got growth to do. Big 6'3", 220 Ropo Hints, man. That This team is set up for a playoff run again. Jason Robertson. Who doesn't love watching Jason Robertson play hockey? It's freaking awesome. Love his energy, his attitude, everything. And if Alexander Radulov can stay away from injury, and that's been uh, that's kind of a big if right now at 35 years old. He has been getting injured quite a bit. This top six looks fantastic. And I love the pickup of Raffle. Jamie Benn in the middle is perfect on the third line. I'm so glad that they've decided to go with Jamie Benn on the third line, Rick uh, Rick Bonus there is a pretty smart dude. Been in the league a long time, love it. Uh, Dennis Guriana, it's time to step up, buddy. Don't you hate when you watch a guy and you go, "This guy should be a thirty-five to forty goal scorer," but he just won't get into the zones enough. He just doesn't go. He's not able to put his body out there enough. It's flat out. If he was, he'd be a thirty goal scorer, but. As it is, he, he ends up being depth scoring, which is too bad. Uh, Como, Faxa, and uh, Luke Lendenning is a fantastic fourth line. The top, Their offensive depth on their roster is fantastic. I love the Ryan Suter pickup. Why not? The guy can still skate like the win. Uh, he, get, he gets an opportunity to play with a great player like John Klingberg where he doesn't have to be the offensive guy on the line. I think it's fan. I think it was a great, great move picking up Brian Suter. Uh, Lindell and Heskinen, fantastic top four there. Suter, Klingberg, Linden, Heskinen. Wow. Excellent. And then Sekera and Hackenpaw. I love it. Hackenpaw's freaking perfect. Exactly what you want for a sixth guy. And 
Um, I, I, I'm surprised who Dobin hasn't been traded yet. I guess he must have mended his whatever was going on with. Uh, but why the heck is Ottinger down here still? Are, are they going to put Ottinger in the minors? Really? They, they, they went and got Holpe. And after Ottinger did as well as he did last year, I don't get it. I thought for sure who Dobin was going to get traded. But that being said, it's a serviceable goaltender tandem. Uh, I'm not as big of an anti uh, who Dobin guy as, as a lot of people are. He's hot and cold. Uh, his consistency to me is not the spectacular, and especially if you put him in a number one role, he doesn't really take well to playing a lot of games. And you're going to hate Braden Holtby. I'll tell you that right now. Ottinger will be taking that spot. Guy is annoying. Talking about his defenseman. Whenever he plays bad, he talks crap about his players and stuff. Don't like him at all. Um, but I love the tr the depth of the Dallas Stars. Ty Delandria, Rhett Gardner, Joel Esperance. Fantastic guys to replace players in the lineup. Uh, perfect. Big, solid. They can provide a role. Excellent. Maverick Bork, wonder when he's going to be ready. Uh, as far as defense is concerned, Thomas Harley has been ripping it up in junior. Might get a really good chance here. However, I'm not as crazy about their defensive depth. If things start going awry on, the, on defense, to, you're not going to like Alex Pe Petrovic in your lineup. I'll tell you that right now. And uh, I don't know enough about Andreas Borgman. He just seems like a defensive defenseman that's a little small to play that role. But overall, I love this lineup. I really love this lineup. So I got him second. And they had him third. So let's look at what the community had as second. The Jets. And I had the Jets third. Um, they had him second. Just a solid overall lineup. Their top nine is, I like Dallas's forward depth better than theirs. And that's the reason why I have Dallas second. Question mark about Pierre-Luc Dubois. He's got to come back after an abysmal year last year. Love Andrew Kopp. Nikolai Ehlers, who knows what his upside. He, he could be a he could be a 40-goal scorer here. His speed is insane. Connor, Kyle Connor can be a, is probably going to score 50 once in his career or more. And then Shifley, Wheeler's getting long in the tooth, but he's still putting up good numbers. Uh, Paul Stastny, Lowry, and the big question mark here is with Christian Vaseline. And he hasn't been able to do it up in the NHL as of yet, but it looks like they're riding him through here. Um, so we'll see how that turns out. And that's what I mean. There's a few more question marks in this lineup for me. Uh, Luke Johnson is okay. Riley Nash. I mean, this they used to have a spectacular fourth line, and now I'd say it's about average after losing Appleton. Um, who else did they lose? They had to lose somebody else. But anyways, uh, losing Appleton was pretty huge. As far as defense is concerned, my biggest question mark is what Nate Schmidt's going to do. Now, it seems that to me, that uh, Maurice gets a lot out of defensemen. Um, Neil Pion came over from the Rangers, crushed it. Um, Logan Stanley has progressed way further than they expected. Dylan DeMello uh, come, came over from Ottawa, looked probably playing the best hockey of his career. So now we're going to see if he can do it with Nate Schmidt, who has been kind of a dumpster fire the last two years so there's a big question mark there for me there's no question mark in net though connor hollebuck beast question mark backup though yeah eric comrie is hasn't really got his opportunity at 26 years old has never really put up uh great numbers in the nhl like terrible numbers in the nhl actually he's only played so a few games and his AHL numbers aren't spectacular either until last year played four games and crushed it in Manitoba. But uh, his best year in pro is probably again with the Manitoba moose. Uh, 
in 2018-19. So awesome he gets an opportunity. I just think it's a big question mark whether he's going to be able to hold on to it or not. And uh, if the good thing is, though, backups are not terribly hard to find. It's just in the NHL today, the best teams seem to have a great one-two punch, and I wouldn't call this one of that. Um, Dominic Toninato, uh, Gustafson, the guys to fill in here are okay. Dylan Sandberg got injured. That is way too bad. Of course, Cole Perfetti, I think ultimately they want him to continue to bulk up, mature physically, and play in the minors one more year. But he can come up in a pinch. Um, I don't – Austin Pagansky and C.J. C. Seuss, and it's not – their, their depth is leaves a little bit to desire, to be desired on forward. I love Ilya Hanela, though. I still think he could take a roster spot this year. But they're being very, very cautious with him. He's not a big uh, defenseman. He's very skilled. But there's other aspects of his game that he needs to progress. Ultimately, I think he's going to be a great top four defenseman. But maybe not again this year. Besides that, there's really nothing that screams – Fill in here. If they get injuries, that, that worries me. It worries me about Winnipeg. Number one, Colorado Avalanche. And uh, what are you going to say? I mean, this lineup is still beastly, and you've got Nathan McKinnon, Miko Rantanen, and Landeskog. First or second best number one line in the league. Although, Pooley Harvey, McDavid, and... Uh, Hyman may give them a run for him for the money in the top two there uh, this year. But Nachuskin Kadri apparently has come in with a new attitude. And if he does, great, because they need it. Hardcore. Alex Newhook is nipping out his heels, though, so he better come back with a new attitude. In shape, strong, and being the best that Kadri can be. If he is... I love that second line. Burakovsky, Kadri, and Nachuskin. I think Nachuskin's freaking awesome as a second line left winger. Doesn't need to play on the power play. Just five on five, create, creating havoc out there. I love that line. It'll make room for Burakovsky's floater shot. He's kind of a floater, but uh, he's got a killer shot. So I like that line. Uh, Yost, Newhook, and Comfort. Solid third line. I think Newhook will probably take Kadri's spot eventually, but uh, I loved what I saw from him at 20 years old last year. Uh, and Darren Helm, eh, whatever. Maltoff and, and and Logan O'Connor. It's serviceable top four, but overall that line, that forward line, uh, those forward lines are pretty good. But this is where it just knocks it right out of the park, man. Devin Taves, Kale McCarr, Samuel Gerrard. Eric Johnson, Bowen Byram, and Ryan Murphy. Best defense in the league. I, I think considerably. Better than Tampa Bay's. Tell me, who's, tell me who's better than that. I don't think there's anybody better than that. Fantastic defense. And then, of course, they went and picked up Darcy Kemper. Watch. Just watch. I mean, he was in Arizona where they were playing a collapsed defense around him all the time. And, uh... It actually makes it tougher for goaltenders to do that, to have this kind of system and defenseman in front of them. I think it's going to be pretty sick for sure. Awesome. And then you still got Martin Cout. Dylan Sakura fills in pretty well when he needs to. Um, Oscar Olison has, I guess, had a really good camp. Um, and, and Sample Ranta has also had a really good camp and looking like he's ready to play at any time. So depth at forward seems pretty good. Um, defense, they maybe not so much. Dennis Gilbert, like it's serviceable. Some guys that might be able to. Uh, Keith Middleton, I'm not sure of. Big boy. Uh, what did he? Let me take a look at that. Keith Middleton from Edmonton. I should know him. He's from my town. Yeah, defensive defenseman, just a big boy. Interesting to see what he can do. But I would say their defense depth is a little bit concerning. Um, there's not much there to take up space, but they can pick up some guys off waivers. And th their top six can go.
go five defensemen with one plug and still be absolutely fantastic. That's my full 42, boys and girls. That's all I have to give today. Thank you for listening to this fine programming. Why don't you sub yourself up and come on to my live broadcast, and I'll send you a My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace. By the way, the more you sub and the more views I get, the more chance I'm going to get the Jet O Frolic going, my friends. That's right. And I'll be going to all the lands, and we'll be Perlo dancing together and have bags of bacon and chocolate. All of us. We're going to pass it out to all the people that don't have bacon and chocolate. Because that's wrong. Right? Totally wrong, right? Should be like, it's complete necessary necessity to life. We'll have naps together and all kinds of frolic. So sub, like, send it out to your friends. Let's get this rolling, man. Talk to you later. Have a great day. Okay, bye.